Hey everyone, I'm Julian here, and welcome to the Soul Along for my new Nomi pattern, which is ME 2059, my fall um, saddle sleeve coat. Really fun pattern. I was really thinking of a lot of like James Bond, that English countryside, people in their Jaguars and stuff like that, those car coats of the mid century. Um, but I wanted to make sure it had some really fun details, such as the saddle shoulders and the seaming, the princess lines in the seaming, allows for a lot of fun pattern play when you, or even color when you think of your fabric choices. So when you look at my pattern, I did it all in one color here, just kind of as a way that this is just a classic timeless look. But in our sew along today, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of an extra option that you can do just by changing your fabric to really give a large impact. So let's get started. So before we get into the nitty gritty of really sewing this coat, I wanna show you the fabric that I plan to use. So this is a, like a tapestry jacquard fabric that I've had in my collection for years. Um, I got it from a local shop here in Cincinnati, Ohio called Silk Rose Textiles. And what I like about it is that it has indinkra symbols in um, the fabric. So it has that um, interesting African edge. And I feel like fabrics like these are really great for this coat just because of its simple lines, but there's also room for some fun details. So if we look at our line drawings, especially our back, we can see how that shoulder detailing and the princess seams really allow for some interesting fun. So I want to play with a little contrast as we have here with um, this fabric is full of like the grayscale of blacks and whites and grays. I think adding this black to it is just going to be a nice contrast. And this is our first hack. So what I plan to do is make my back band, my sleeves, my collar, as well as uh, my pocket welts in this black so that it can contrast with the body of the coat, which will be in this tapestry print. This is also a great coat for a lot of your upcycling projects, especially if you like to um, upcycle with quilts or with um, tapestries that you might find at a thrift store or something like that. Really great use um, that will be a little bit different than what you normally see. So let's get started. So one of the first things that I want to mention about this pattern is that it now comes in an increased size range. So this pattern goes from size 38 chest up to a size 56 chest, where normally patterns usually stop at around 52. So that's a really exciting thing. But because of that, you might notice that your size has moved envelopes. I'm normally around a 46, um, and usually I can find that in a size BB. But because of the way the size range runs in this coat, it is in a size AA. So I just want that to be something that you take notice of. So as I will be making view A of this coat, so that is the one with the buttons. These are the pieces that I will need. We start with piece number one, which is our front. We are going to cut two out of our fabric. Next, we would need piece two, which is our side front. We are going to cut two out of fabric as well as two out of lining. Next, we need piece three, which is our welt. We will cut two out of fabric as well as two out of interfacing. We need piece four, which is our pocket. We need two out of fabric as well as two out of lining. Next, we need piece five, which is our back. We are going to cut two out of fabric. Then 
then we need P6, which is our tab, which is across the back. We need one out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Then we need P7, which is our side back. We will need two out of fabric as well as two out of lining. Then we will need piece eight, which is our yoke and sleeve front. We will need two out of fabric and two out of lining. Then we will need piece nine, which is our yoke and sleeve back. We will need two out of fabric and two out of lining. And then we will need piece 10, which is a collar for A. We will need two out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Then we will need piece 11, which is our front facing. We will need two out of fabric and two out of interfacing. Piece 12 is our front lining. We will cut two out of our lining fabric. We then need piece 13, which is our right back lining. We will cut one of these. So if you decide to follow along with me and do a little hack of the pattern, I'm adding a contrasting fabric, especially on our collar, our sleeves, and our welts and our back tab. So to do that, you will need to cut these pattern pieces out of the contrasting fabric instead of the regular main fabric. So those are Piece three, which are our welt, we'll cut those out of the contrasting fabric as well as out of interfacing. Piece number four, we will cut um, two of these out of the contrasting fabric as well as two of these out of the lining fabric. Or in my case, I used, um, I cut four out of the contrasting fabric. You'll need to cut one of uh, piece six, which is the tab, out of your contrasting fabric, as well as one of out of interfacing. You will cut piece eight, which are your um, yoke and sleeve fronts, out of your contrasting fabric. Um, you'll cut two of those, as well as two out of your lining fabric. Finally, you'll cut piece nine, which are your yoke and sleeve back out of your contrasting fabric twice, as well as um, you'll cut two of your lining as well. So to get us started, what I'm going to do is take um, both of my front pieces and I'm going to stay stitch the neckline as well as stay stitch the dots for my pocket. So I'm going to um, stitch an inch above as well as an inch below those dots marked on your pattern for your pocket. What I also did because of this fabric's weave, I went ahead and provided a little bit of stabilization um, across those dots. So I will still go ahead and reinforce where those dots are, but I also went ahead and added a piece of stabilizer on the back. That is up to you depending on the type of fabric that you're using. Now, 
Now we're going to take piece number three, which is our welt, which is been interfaced. We are going to fold it in half, making sure that our notches are marked. And we are going to sew down each side at 5 8 7 inch seam allowance. So once I sewed down both sides of my welt, I went ahead and clipped my corners as well as my seam allowance and turned it right side out, giving it a good press. So now that our welt is done, what we're going to do is we are going to take our coat front And you know where that pocket is by the cutout notch there. And I've also made some little clips where my dots are. That's just um, my chosen method of marking where I keep dots and notches and stuff on a busier fabric. But we are going to take our welt. Placing it on top. Mark, um, matching where my notch is with the rest of the pocket as well as where my dots are making sure that this is all lined up together and we are going to base this in place So once you have base stitch your welt in place, I went ahead and just put my pocket piece, one of my pocket pieces right over top. And I've also marked my dots on here. So I will be sewing my pocket piece on at five eighths of an inch, seam allowance um, between the dots. And it should line up with actual welt as well. So once that pocket piece is sewn on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up and give it a nice finger press. And we're going to go ahead and stitch, under stitch along that edge. So basically we're gonna make sure that we are pushing all the seam allowances this way. We're gonna do a small line of stitching right on the pocket piece itself so as that it does not start creeping out when your hand's in your pocket. So we're gonna do that between the dots as well. So once I have completed my understitching along my pocket piece, what I went ahead and did was I went ahead and clipped between both sides of the fabric on either side of my welt at those dots. What this allows me to do is be able to have my pocket go there so I will not be catching my pocket when I go to install my side front. But for now, what we're gonna do is just put these up above it. There you go. And we're gonna take our other pocket piece, right sides together, making sure to match all my notches. And we are going to go ahead and sew along this edge. Now, if you're scared of catching your front in the piece, you can actually pivot it right at where you made that um, make that slash into the fabric. And then you can line everything up and it's out the way so you don't uh, accidentally catch it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, give this a press, and then we'll start working on installing our side front. So now that we have gone ahead and installed our other pocket piece, 
If you look at it from the front, after giving it a press, you will notice that your pocket is facing to where your side front will be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this welt piece, we're gonna kind of fold that back and either baste it in place or just give it a pin here, um, just so it's out the way as we go to attach our side fronts to this seam. So I've gone ahead and sewn on my side front panel to my front panel. And as you can see here, we have our welt and our pocket is going towards the front of the coat. Now, as you're sewing this on, it can get bulky as you're getting around this welt. Um, sometimes you might find that your seam allowance is not quite five, eight, five eighths of an inch. and You might see a little bit of those stitching lines here. If that is the case, what you can do is you can go ahead and do a slip stitch by hand, just making sure that all of your seam allowances line up in these areas. I like to say that you can hide a multitude of sins with a few hand stitches. So feel free to do that if it is not lining up as close as you want to due to the bulk of this. Now, once um, your fronts are on and I have pressed my seam allowance is open. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to top stitch the two edges of my welt pocket onto the side front. And we're gonna do that as close to the edge as possible. Now that both of my fronts are done and I've attached my pockets, this is where I kind of diverge from the pattern slightly. So I find that putting the whole body of the coat together and then installing the sleeves, it's a little bit cumbersome, um, especially under um, my sewing machine. But because of this type of sleeve that offers that top shoulder seam, what I am going to go ahead and do is attach my shoulder and sleeve front to um, my front panel of my coat. I'm going to sew it at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I then go back and sew it again 1 eighth inch away within the seam allowance of that. Just for stability, I then go ahead and clip and give it a press. So, on the inside, this is what it looks like. So I'm gonna add that to this other side and then we'll start working on the back of the coat. So installing um, the sleeve front to my coat, I make sure that I'm lining up all of my notches and my dots at the top. And as you can see, you're gonna have to do a little bit of easing, but it's important to take your time and go around the curve. So we're gonna sew this at five eighths of an inch and then again, one eighth of an inch within that seam allowance. Now that we're gonna start working on the back panel, what we're gonna start with is by reinforcing this inner corner. Now what I've done because of this uh, tapestry style fabric, I've put a, a square of interfacing here just to kind of help make sure that it doesn't warp out of place or anything like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew an inch above uh, the dot, the large dot here, pivot at there and go at a diagonal another inch, making sure that this is all taken care of. And then we're going to clip into this corner here to the actual dot. Once we have done that, we are going to place these right sides together. And so from the dot all the way to the top, making sure that our notches all match. We will then go ahead and press our seam allowance open. So now that we've gone ahead and put together our back panel and pressed our seams open, we're gonna start working on our back tab. So we're gonna take piece number six, which is our back tab, which has already been interfaced, and we're going to fold it in half lengthwise and then stitch it along this line, five eighths inch seam allowance. We will then go ahead and turn this out and give it a press with making sure that this seam is fitting into the middle of the piece. And when I get there, I will show you how that works. So I've gone ahead and did my strap. And once I turned it out, I've positioned it so that my 
back seam is toward the center of the actual tab itself. And to match the top stitching I did along the pockets, I went ahead and did um, two lines of top stitching, one at the bottom and one at the top at an eighth inch seam allowance. Now, we're going to base this onto our back panel at the two uh, dots. So now, what, of course, what I do to mark my dots is I go ahead and make small notches in my fabric. And we're going to place this right side up along those dots. And I am going to simply do a line of stitching on either end to tack that in place. And then we'll start working on attaching our back side panels. So as you can see, um, the back panel is all put together. And you can also see that there's already starting to build some curve into it so that it can contour around your body because there are curves in the shape of the back piece. So now, similar to, similarly to the front, what I'm going to go ahead and do is start working on my back shoulder and sleeve part. So to do that, I'm going to take my pieces here and we are going to put them right sides together and we're going to sew them five eighths of, a, of an inch at where it is a triple knot. So this will be um, your center back piece. So we're going to sew that together and then press the seam allowance open. So now that we've gone ahead and stitched that center back seam, what you can go ahead and do is you can go ahead and stay stitch the neckline of the outer coat edge um, and five eighths of an inch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start pinning this along this back edge. So we're going to make sure that our centers match as well as our notches. And we are also going to make sure that we're matching all of our notches all the way around as well as our dots. And we're going to sew that along this edge at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then reinforce again um, an eighth of an inch within the same allowance from there. So now that we have the back sewn up together with our sleeves on, we can really see why this coat really lends itself to do some color blocking or using contrasting fabric because of this interesting same detail um, that is just highlights it. So I love it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attach our fronts to our back here at our shoulder and the top of our sleeves. We're going to do that at 5 eighths of seam allowance. Once we have done that, we are going to press that seam open. So as you're pinning your pieces together, if you're using this method at the shoulder seam, you might notice that at first glance, your notches are not going to match on this outer edge. But if you pin at the bottom and at the top, um, that is going to help make sure that these curves then match and you can ease in all the rest of this so that they do come to match when you put this together. I'm going to actually start at the bottom of my sleeve and work my way up um, on both both sides to make sure that I am getting the right amount of ease in the right places along that curve. So as you can see, I am taking my time, making sure that I am able to make this curve, still at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And at the moment, my notches do not match up, which is okay, um, because I rather my neckline and my hem match up and my curve still does match. So hence why I started pinning at the bottom and at the top and then distributed all the interior.
And the biggest thing that we see here is that while they don't, they're about an inch off, everything, the curve matches correctly. So that is what we're gonna focus on. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over to my iron. I'm gonna press these seams open. So now that we've gone ahead and pressed our seam open for the top of our sleeve, we're now gonna work on the side. So I pinned my coat shell all the way from the bottom through the sleeve all the way to the top. And I'm going to start sewing from the bottom all the way up, 5 8 inch seam allowance on either side. And then we will press these seams open as well. So you might notice that this is the way that you put most of like a lot of your men's shirts and stuff together. And that's just how my mind works. Um, if you like it where you are putting the sleeve together first and then putting it into the coat, the pattern instructions does um, go through those steps for you in that order. So now that we have gone ahead and sewn up the body of the coat and pressed our, our seam allowances open, we will now attach our collar. So we take our interface collar piece and we attach it kind of the large edge of the um, collar to the coat body itself, right sides together. And this is, I'm using my interface piece. I go first and I match my centers. I made a small notch there so I know where my center is of my collar. And then my small dots match to my shoulder seams and I match my notches as well. And then we just sew it all the way around, five eighths inch seam allowance. And as needed, you go ahead and clip this curve after sewing it and you want to press your seam allowance open. Then we'll start working on the lining. To get started with our lining, there is some prep work that needs to happen. The first thing we need to do is we need to shorten our lining pieces um, on the side back, the side front, and both sleeve pieces. What we're going to do is we are cutting off an inch off the bottom edge. This will allow us to make sure everything lies properly when we do the bag lining. So go ahead and cut, trim off your inch off of each of these pieces. So on the front facing pieces that are already um, interfaced, what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and stay stitch the top neckline on both sides, as well as we are going to reinforce the um, dot, which is at the bottom right here. I'm, I marked it with a notch here, so we're gonna sew an inch above, an inch below at 5 8 7 inch seam allowance. Um, and this will come in handy when we start to put our lining together. So I've gone ahead and finished up all my lining pieces as well as attached my collar facing. What we are now going to do is we are going to put the two pieces together, the lining as well as the outer shell, right sides together. We are then going to stitch down, starting from the bottom, all the way around the interfacing, up, pivot at the collar, all the way around and back down to the other facing side. After that, what we will then do is we will go ahead and we will understitch our collar piece towards the lining itself. And I'll show you that when we get there. That we will pin together. And what we're going to do is so from where this dot is, I'm gonna mark a pin here and sew all the way up to the top. So I will meet you at the sewing machine when we do that. So once you have gone on and sewn up your um, back seam of your lining, starting at your bottom dot and working your way up, what we are now going to do once pressed is we are going to go ahead and stitch in the pleat, um, which is marked on your pattern for about two inches or so. So we're gonna then stitch that. And then what we will do is press 
our back piece open from that pleat. So your seam allowance itself will not be pressed open. Once you have done that, what you are then going to do is put together your lining similarly to how you put together your um, coat body. So you're going to put your side backs on, you are going to put your facing, then your front lining piece, then your side fronts, then you can go ahead and do your uh, shoulders for your sleeves on your back and your front and then sew it all together. Once you have done that, we'll come back together as we put on our collar for the lining. So now that we've gone ahead and sewn our lining to our outer fabric, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that my, my corners are clipped on all edges. And I am going to go through the bottom of the coat to the collar. And I'm going to understitch along this edge just to make sure that all of my same allowances are faced towards my lining piece so that my collar will roll back towards the lining and um, not get stretched out of shape. Also here they tell you to go ahead and attach the two piece like the inner collar and the outer collar together. I'm going to wait and stitch in the ditch um, once we turn the coat out. So we're going to do this under stitch and then we will take it back over to the main table and I'll show you how we will attach our lining at our bottom edge. And as we are getting here, as you can see, it's getting real tight under my needle. You do not have to go all the way to the edge with your understitching. You want to get as close as you can just to make sure that most of the collar does not flip towards the outside. So I think we're going to stop here. So as you can see, on the interface side, I went ahead and understitched to about upwards of uh, two, one to two inches on either side of my upper neck edge or the upper part of my collar. What the pattern also calls for you to do is to understitch as far as you can down the front edge of your coat. So you want to take that back to your machine and also understitch that. So now we're going to focus on um, fixing the lining around our vent. So with our coat still right sides together, as you can see by both of my seams facing outward, we're going to start on the right side matching our right back piece to our left back piece at the dots. We're going to match our dots and we're going to start up here and work our way down and stopping within two inches of the bottom, which I've marked with a pin. And we're going to make sure that we're not catching our other side of our lining to that. So on the left side, what we're going to do, moving that out the way, is we're going to do something similar where we are taking our coat piece, matching up our dots again, and working our way down, stopping within two inches of our seam line so that this can then turn back. So now that the lining has been attached to the vents of the jacket, what we are now gonna start doing is um, working on the hem of the coat. So. Now note, the lining is an inch shorter. So what you're gonna start doing is pulling down this lining to match the hem, okay? And we're gonna start matching our seams on all of the fronts. Now, we are then going to sew this across at half an inch seam allowance, knowing that there's gonna be a space here at the edge for turning in, but we're gonna sew this around and we're gonna make sure that at one of these, at one of these places, we're So now that we have gone ahead and sewn our um, lining here, our lining edge to the bottom of our coat um, shell, 
Remember we left this two inch space um, between the lining and the shell at the back vent. What we are now going to do is we are going to fold the outer shell up and over just to complete that fold. So that two inches that we have here, um, whatever wrinkle is right there, this will like naturally fold this edge up on either side. What you're now going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to finish this edge all the way down on this side. And I'm going to finish this edge and come across on this side. So now that you have the coat fully turned out, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that your, um, what will be the right side of your vent is laying under your left. And along this top edge here, um, you can go ahead and pin that so that you can either slip stitch it or top stitch it. Just the length of that vent to hold it together. Once you have done that, we're gonna start working on the sleeves. So to prepare, um, the process of hemming your sleeve, you want to make sure that you put your lining into your sleeve. So once you have bagged it, bagged it out, you want to make sure that you are threading your lining sleeve into your outer shelf sleeve. Once you have done that, this is where the origami comes in a little bit. What you are then going to do is you're going to take your sleeves and I like to match them up um, with my seam allowances. and I turn my seam allowances in um, so that they are matching and I pin them in place. What I then am going to do is I'm going to find my hole in the lining we're going to pin or pull that sleeve through there okay now, as you will notice, these two, I found my pin and they're still pinned in place. What I can then do is go through and match up all of my lining right sides together all along so that we can go and hem our sleeves. And we're going to be using our regular uh, seam allowance of five eighths of an inch. So once you've gone ahead and sewn your sleeve lining to your sleeve, it looks like there's like a huge tube and you're going to be a little worried. Um, luckily, doing it this way where you put them together from inside the coat is going to make it work out. So you're going to pull it back out through the hole in the sleeve. There you go. And what you'll notice is that everything is lined here. So now once you have gone ahead and done that, you want to turn your sleeve, make sure that it's on the right side. You want to give this a press um, and you're gonna be pressing up the sleeve hem. So that, as you can see, is a, a, that about an inch difference is gonna be that sleeve hem. Um, and then you're gonna allow your sleeve lining to drop. 
And that's if you prefer to hand slip um, through the opening in the lower edges of the coat. Um, you want to tack in the, um, the shoulder and the arm side of the jacket. So you want to make a few tacking stitches just to hold all of your linings together um, throughout the jacket. So usually you'll do one, two up here, and then one down here in the armhole just to make sure that you are holding your um, lining in place. What you're then going to do to finish up your sleeve lining is you are going to top stitch this at 7 8 inch um, seam allowance. So now we're on to the final finishing of the coat. What you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you are slip stitching in your lining and give your time lining to drop. Um, as we know that this coat has some um, different weights of fabric and different things like that. So you want to make sure that you're giving time for your lining to get acclimated to the coat just in case you need to even up anything. Um, what you are then going to do is you're going to pin this lining out the way and you're going to top stitch on the outside of the coat at uh, 7 8 in seam allowance after you make sure that you slip stitch this as well as this little space at the edge of your front. You want to make sure you slip stitch that. Now with me, I like to leave a little extra room if I have to go in and kind of pull out my collar. So I'm going to slip stitch this all together and then add on my buttons, meaning I will add on my buttons and buttonholes to the front of the coat, um, all the way from the collar down, but then also adding my buttons to my tab if you so desire. After that, you have completed No Me 2059. I don't know about you, but I think I'm ready for fall coat season. What do you think?